sleeping when I left this morning. Here, let me put the shawl up on your shoulders, and I'll get us a cool drink. You know, you look well today. She left the cat in, Anna. Anna, she left the cat in. Mother, why'd you leave the cat in? Cara, wait, wait. I'm sorry, Anna. I, I, I didn't mean to hurt her. I couldn't stop from hitting her. I told her that the cats scare me. They do, especially that one. Cara, listen to me. That is not mother. Do you understand? Cara, that is not mother. Listen, listen. That's a dummy, a store dummy. You hear me? Sorry, Anna. Will she be okay? Yes, Carl, yes. Oh, calm down. Did you see the cat? He's gone. He won't hurt you, Carl. Are you sure? Yes. Please, go look. I did. He went out the door as I came in. Go look. Now, calm down. <laughs> I really did let him out when I came in. He won't hurt you now. She was just sitting there when I came in, Anna. I was going to get her something cold to drink when I saw the cat. Listen to me. That's a dummy, a store dummy, like you see in windows. It's not mother. Do you understand? You know I didn't mean to hit her. I know, know I know, but you didn't hit her, and she, it isn't mother. But where is mother? She, she was there. She was sleeping when I left. Carl, please. I don't know how to get through to you anymore. Try to understand. Mother, mother is dead. You know that. She's been dead for 15 years. <laughs> Carl, this has got to stop. I don't know where you got that terrible thing, but I don't want you bringing any more into the house. Now, have I made myself clear? Do you understand me? I'm sorry. I promise not to do it again. Anna? You won't turn me in, will you? No, I won't send you away. I couldn't do that. Carl, I'm going to go up and take a nice, relaxing shower. Why don't you lie down for a little bit? At least until dinner's ready. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll clean it up. Go on now. You're good to me. You're my brother, Carl. We're supposed to be good to each other. Go on.
You've got to help me in the bed. You disgust me. You know that. You're turning into a drunken bum, Frank. Not a very pretty sight. Don't nag me! Does it make you feel big to hit me? Knowing I can't help myself? Frank, what's happened to you? Shut up! I won't shut up. It's time we face up to things. You're drinking. The other women? You're goddamn right there are other women. Such a funny accident, it's been of no use to me. I'm human, you know. I'm still a man. Your life may be finished, but mine's not. You wake the children. So what? So what? Let them see us sitting pitifully in that chair. Let them know once and for all you become nothing but a useless lump of flesh. And you? What have you become? A drunk? A slob? An adulterer? Shut up! I won't shut up. Not this time. You want a divorce, Mr. Kettler? Don't try to blame your failures on me. I know all about the money you lose and the debt that we're in. Your business is failing, Frank. Don't try to tell me otherwise. You're not man enough anymore to rise up and take care of your affairs. And you've become a failure. You living, breathing, bitch, shut up! chair, screaming, and he hit her over and over again. It's all over now. Lay back and rest. It isn't over. Not yet. Carl, I don't know how many times I've tried to explain to you. It's a sickness in your mind. Through no fault of yours, but it's there. No doctors, not like Mother. All right. You've got to promise me that you'll talk it over with me when it gets to bothering you. Promise. Promise. And no more make-believe people. That horrible thing downstairs.
morning, Carl. Hi, Mr. Phillips. Well, whatever you're eating, it looks good, Carl. Tuna fish. You want some? No, no, no. Just finished lunch. Cold drink? No, no, thank you, Carl. What's wrong with your leg? Huh? Your leg. Well, now, haven't you ever noticed that before? Yeah. Well, result of an accident during the war. What kind of an accident? <laughs> a German bullet. Then it wasn't an accident. Well, no, I guess that depends on how you look at it, Carl. But if the man deliberately shot at you, it wasn't an accident. Uh, well, uh, I guess you're right at that, Carl. Does it hurt much? Yeah, well, sometimes when the weather gets chilly. I'm sorry that it bothers you. Well, thank you, Carl, but uh, you get used to certain things. You really shouldn't be doing this kind of work. Not on that leg. See you tomorrow, Carl. Uh, say hello to Anna for me. Yeah. Mail's in the box. If you're through with that bottle, bring it back into the house. And where are your glasses? Hmm. On the big table. Well, put them on, please. Did he know mother and father? Carl, how am I ever going to get these bills straight if you keep talking? Yes, he knew mother and father. He went to school with mother. He never mentions it. Well, I'm going to the beach. Carl. That's another thing you're going to have to accept. Everyone knows what happened in this house, especially Mr. Phillips. So they're going to avoid mentioning anything that might bring back the memory. Why did you say especially Mr. Phillips? Oh, no reason. Carl, about yesterday morning. Yes? Well, I think we should talk about it some more. Yes, Anna, what's that? Do you recall what happened here yesterday? I mean, with the wheelchair? The wheelchair? Mother's chair? What are you talking about, Anna? Nothing. Nothing at all. You go on. Have a good time at the beach.
Are you all right? Yeah, I guess so. Hey, wait a minute. What the hell are you doing? You could have been killed. Did you get hurt? No, no. I'm all right. All right. Can you hear me coming? It was too late when I did. I was going in for a swim. Yeah, yeah, OK, OK. Your motorcycle OK? Did anything break? No. I don't think so. Uh, you just gonna stand there like that? I mean, if you're going in for a swim, go. Look, I'm sorry if I caused you trouble. Hey, uh, can you swim around here like that? I mean, is this a private beach or something? Nobody ever comes here. That is, it isn't public or anything. The public beach is a couple miles that way. Yeah? Yeah. I sure could use a bath. <laughs> it's soft water, you know. Yeah, right now, anything would do. What's your name? Carl Owen. My name is Tony. Hey, look. I bring my own sub with me. <laughs> Man, you could have gotten killed back there. Yeah. That would have been bad. <laughs> Man, I wish you could have seen yourself standing there bare-ass naked. And that bike about to slam into you. <laughs> hey, man, uh, you sure it's all right to go in there like this, huh? Yeah, I've done it lots of times. Nice looking motorcycle. Yeah, it gets me where I want to go. Where are you going? Everywhere. I'm traveling across the country for the last six months. You coming? You were alone. Anna, this is Tony. I never did get your last name. Hello, Anna. Hello. I asked Tony to have supper with us. Is that okay? Why, of course. I didn't catch your last name. Walters. Tony Walters. Well, make yourself at home, Mr. Walters. Have you known Carl long? We just met at the beach. Look, I, I, um... I feel a little out of place. I mean, your brother's very generous, but I realize it's kind of sudden for dinner. Nonsense. We have plenty. You like chicken? Oh, yeah. Fine. Dinner will be ready in a few minutes. Good. I'll be right back. I, um, I really appreciate your not minding my staying.
And so there he was, coming at me on this motorcycle. You could have been killed. <laughs> that was close enough to scare the hell out of me. I didn't know what to do. I just froze. I couldn't move. I didn't have any clothes on. Where were your clothes? I went in first one. With no clothes on? Carl! Well, wasn't anybody on the beach or anything. I was alone. Mr. Walters was there. Call me Tony, please. Yeah, but that was different. He had the same idea. In fact, we both went in with no clothes on. But it was all right, ma'am. We were the only ones in sight. It was okay. Okay for you, maybe. He knows better, and he also owns a bathing suit. So do I. Well, he knows better. So do I. Well, anyway, Tony wasn't in a hurry or anything. He wasn't going anyplace. So I talked him into coming home for dinner. Tell him about how he was traveling across the country. Is that right? Where are you going, Mr. Walters? Tony. Well, I'm just traveling, you know, no place in particular. Don't you work? Yeah, when I need money. Seems a little uncertain to me. <laughs> well, that's the idea, ma'am. No commitments. Come now, we all have commitments. Why? Why what? Why must we always be committed to something? What would we be if we weren't? Out riding around on our motorcycles in the countryside? Well, that may be quite satisfying to you, but not everybody can live that way. Look, I spent two and a half years being committed in the war. And before that, 22 years in a small town in Arizona being committed to everything that town stood for. Right now, I just don't feel like being committed to anything. I take it that you've just recently returned. Two years, ma'am. What are you committed to? I have many commitments. Which would you like to hear about first? I think maybe it'd be best if I didn't hear any of them. If you had struck Carl with your motorcycle. But he didn't. But he just as easily could have. But he didn't. Just the same. I wish you wouldn't go around naked when there was absolutely no reason for it. I mean, really, Carl, you are not a child. We're talking about the motorcycle, not about my swimming nude. We were talking about you acting like a child in general. Hey, haven't you ever wanted to go skinny dipping? For God's sake, no. Well, it's fun. You should try it. I don't want you doing it again. I'm sorry <laughs> if I'm the cause of all of this. <laughs> no, not at all. See, Anna watches out for me. Someone has to watch out for me, so Anna does it. I can't be treated like an adult in front of my guests. You see, Tony, Anna enjoys looking after me. And she spends all her waking hours doing it, too. And as long as she does, she feels secure, knowing that I'll not harm anyone, nor get into any trouble. Carl. Please excuse me. Now I've done it. Will you finish it? I'll see if I can patch things up, OK? Just the other way around. I'm sorry I came. You see? It's important for Carl to show his independence. I'm just sorry he chose to do it when we had a guest present. Well, just the same. I think I'll be on my way. He never brings anyone home. He likes you. Try to understand. Carl doesn't make very many friends. I mean, people are kind to him because they pity him. Maybe I do get a little overprotective. But if I don't, who will? Say goodbye to Carl for me, will you? I'm sorry. It wasn't your fault. I was rude. It's just that I don't know which way to turn anymore. I seem to snap at everything. That's all right. I'll be gone in a while, and you'll never know that I was here. No, please. I'm sorry. I'm stupid. Won't you stay for a little while? I'll make some coffee. You can talk. 
Well, I guess I could stay until Carl finishes eating. <laughs> Your brother has an appetite of a horse. <laughs> he eats like that all the time. Come outside and get some fresh air with me. Let's go. One time we owned all that, too. I had to sell it, finally. There were lots of trees. And Carl and I used to play out there. It was like having our own park right in the backyard. That's when we had a family. Everyone's gone now, except me and Carl. I wanted to ask you about that wheelchair in the living room. That was my mother's chair. My father killed her, murdered her as she sat in that chair. Oh, my God. I've said it. After all these years, I've said it. To a total stranger. Carl witnessed it, you see. He saw the whole thing. That's why he is the way he is. I mean, he's OK, but from time to time, he recalls the details of that night. Other times, he doesn't remember or even know that it ever happened. His mind seems to switch it on and off. Well, has he seen a doctor? They put him away in a minute. He's like a child at times. He's intelligent, yet he's not. The nightmares. And now, I'm afraid. Of what? It's been getting worse for him all the time. I'm just afraid. Well, send him to a doctor. I can't do that. I can't take the chance that they'll put him away. I promised him. I promised him. Besides, he relies on me for everything, and I wouldn't be able to be with him all the time if he were in a home or an institution. Well, you don't know that. I mean, you can't be sure about that. Look, I don't know about these things, but maybe it's something simple, you know, like a, a mental block or something. It would be worth checking out anyway. But what if I make the wrong decision and they put him away? What happens then? To who? To Carl. Look. It's none of my business, but I think whatever happens to Carl would be the best thing for him. Well, I can't take that chance. Uh, I see. So Big Sister gives up her life for Little Brother, right? That's cruel. Look, it wasn't meant to be. But you're going to want a life of your own someday, and he's going to have to face that, isn't he? I don't look forward to a life of my own. I stopped thinking like that a long time ago. When my father died, he left us with a great deal of debt. He had lost a fortune, and every cent I could find went to the creditors. This house and what's in it is all that's left. So what would Carl do on his own, even if he got better? How would he live? No, I'm afraid there's no other answer for me. So I'll be committed for a few minutes. I'm making fools of us both. No, to me. When is the last time someone kissed you? Would you like to stay the night? It's getting late and you have to sleep somewhere. Then you can leave in the morning. I guess so. Fine.
goodness, are you still eating? I just finished off the chicken. Carl, I've invited Tony to stay the night. Oh, that's fine. But how did she convince you to stay? I thought you were in a hurry to be on your way. Well, I am, but uh, I can wait until morning. It's late, and I hated to think your friend didn't have a place to stay. Yeah, you're right. Well, I'll clear the table, and, Carl, you can show Tony his room. If it's all right with you, I would like to turn in now. I mean, the, the thought of a real bed is great. Well, then I'll see you in the morning before you leave. Yeah, for sure. Come on, Tony. We have a room you can have all to yourself. Good night. Good night. I didn't wake you up, did I? No. I was awake. I thought you were asleep. I was, but I woke up. I heard you go down the hall. I wanted to talk to you. What about? Come on, son. I don't want to wake Carl. I... Well, I feel I acted rather stupid in the garden earlier. I... I wanted to apologize. Oh, that isn't necessary. I know. But, well, I don't usually act like a child in front of strangers. But if it made you feel good to talk to somebody, I'm glad I was there. Believe me, there's no need to apologize. Thank you for understanding. Well, I guess I ought to let you go back to bed now, huh? You want me to stay or don't you? It's the hurry. Tony, you must know. I mean, about men. Well, there have been none in my life. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm 28 years old and there have been no men in my life. And I was rushing because I'm afraid I won't be able to go through with it if I don't. Okay, okay. Slow down. There's no need to explain. You want me to stay, just tell me and I'll stay. Yes. Yes, I want you to stay. <laughs>
sort of thing. Too often. Oh, my God, what am I going to do now? Ah! Tony, look. There's something under that blanket. things home. Store dummy. I know what it is. Get it out of here. Then you'll help me move. We'll get Carl back in Japan. You sure you didn't hurt him? I knocked him out. But he'll be okay. You get some sleep. Tony, please, get rid of it. I can't hurt you. I'll get it out of the house. Where will you put it? Don't worry about it. You get some sleep. Don't worry about Carl. He'll be okay until morning.
I, uh, I helped myself to some coffee. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. You must have gotten up early. Did you sleep all right? <laughs> Not as well as I could have. Carl's still sleeping. You'll stay for breakfast, of course. I know he'll want to see you before you leave. Look, I think it'd be better for all concerned if I just took off now, okay? He won't remember last night. I mean, if that's what you're worried about. He never remembers. No, that's not it. I, I just think that I'd better go now. Where will you go? Oh, maybe up to uh, Cocoa Beach. I might as well, since I'm so close. And then, well, then I thought I would uh, just drive right up the coast. Sounds exciting. Tony? Seems crazy, all that I've involved you in these past 15 hours. Everything kind of happened. Carl? You and me? Well, I... I wish we had met another time under different circumstances. Tony, Tony, this isn't fair to you. I know that. But I need somebody right now. I haven't got anyone to turn to, and I need help. That's right. You do need help. But not mine. Get a doctor for Carl, Anna. That's the only thing that's going to help both of you. I wish it were that easy, but it's not. Tony, listen to me. Last night wasn't the first time. Carl's done this before. That wheelchair in the living room. It was in that chair that my father beat my mother to death. Anna. And he's made me keep that chair there ever since. Look, that's ridiculous. Just have someone take the chair away. A few days ago, I came home and I found Carl in the living room. On the floor was one of those hideous mannequins. He had smashed it to bits. Tony, he had recreated the whole thing just as it happened 15 years ago. Anna, there is not a thing that I can do for you. You can for me. You can help me. Tony, it'll just be for a few days. He's my brother. I love him. I've got to protect him, and I don't know how. Look, I've got my own problems. I can't get involved with yours. And what difference can three days possibly make? What's three days to you? How will you explain to Carl my stay? You will stay? Oh, I haven't said that. I'll just tell Carl that you've accepted an invitation to stay. He's the one who brought you here. He likes you. He'll be glad you're staying. I know he will. Just a few days. Oh, Tony, thank you. I just saw your brother Carl at the window. I'm not going to understand your arms around me. Has Tony left yet? No. Come on, get up now. Breakfast is going to be ready in five minutes. Oh, I asked Tony to stay for a few days. I thought you might enjoy having a friend around. Good. Well, he wasn't in a hurry to get any place, and since you like him, I asked him to stay. Well, get dressed. Are you going to spend the whole day in bed?
find you too. You be real quiet now. I'll make sure they don't take you away. I think you have to do something, anything, today. The longer you put it off, the worse it'll be. Please, Tony, go slow. He won't understand. Besides, I wouldn't know where to begin. All right. You can start with that wheelchair. It's got to get out of here. I won't stand for that. That's your problem. You're afraid of what he'll say or do. Look, as long as that wheelchair is here, it's a constant reminder to him. The sooner you face that, the better. I understand. No, you don't understand. Now, you ask me to stay here and help, and that's exactly what I intend to do. Where are you going? To get that chair out of here. Exactly what he needs. But not like this. Not this sudden. Now, do you want me to help you or not? It's your choice. Now, you ask me to stay, remember? I know. All right, then that's it. It's settled. What's settled? Well, Carl, we thought we would just move this chair out of this room, okay? You can't do that. That's Mother's wheelchair. Now, she doesn't need it anymore, does she, Carl? Go easy to me. All right, all right. That's Mother's chair. Mother needs that chair. You know she doesn't get around very well. She needs that chair. For God's sake, Carl, Mother is dead. Once and for all, she is dead, dead, dead. He's making you do this, isn't he? Well, I'm sorry I brought you here. And I want you to leave right now. I want you to go. You don't know what you're saying. I know very well what I'm saying. I saw you holding him outside. You thought I was sleeping, but I saw you. You're not taking Mother away from me, and you're not taking Anna. Carl, I'm not trying to take anything away from you. I'm just trying to help you. Now, I would like to get this chair out of this room. That's all. But I need the chair where I can see No, you don't. Where are you going to put it? What about the garage? Yes, the garage. Just for a while, Carl. The garage is not that far away. Maybe I'll lie down now. I, I think I'll skip breakfast. That's a very good idea. And when you feel better, you can come down. Yes, I think I'll do that. I have to go to the store for a while, so Tony will stay with you while I'm gone. No, I don't want him near me. Well, I'll take Anna to the store, okay? I don't think that's a very good idea. Please don't! Just leave me alone! Let him go. He'll be all right in a while. Come on, I'll take you to the store on the bike. I don't know. Now stop thinking about it. We'll have some breakfast, and when we get back, I'll take the chair to the garage.
Good morning, Carl. Hi. Sure is a warm day. Yeah? I'm afraid all I brought you today was bills, Carl. Why don't you rest for a minute? In all this heat, you must be worn out. Now, you know, Carl, I think I will. Just for a minute, though. No, not there. Come on in. I'll get you a cold drink. Oh, now, Carl, that's, that's the best offer I've had today. <laughs> yes, sir. Say, where's that lovely sister of yours? She went to the store. Sure is hot. What would you like? Iced tea? Coulet? Coke? <laughs> No, just, just cold water, Carl. Cold water with ice. Yep, that's the best thing for you, water. I don't drink much of those other things they put out. You know, they got all kinds of things in the market today. Uh, diet drinks and the thirst quenching drinks, you know, they're supposed to get through your system quick. <laughs> Why? And, uh, and those artificial fruit drinks, what they call them? <laughs> I, I don't scribe much of them sort of things. <clears throat> Ah, yes, just you. It's good old water. Mm. That's the best thing for you. Thank you. <sighs> yep. That's good. That hits the spot. Want more? No, oh, no, it's not, not too good to uh, drink too much when you're hot and sweaty. Well, what have you been doing with yourself lately? Just a little fishing. How much else? Hmm. How about your leg? Oh, uh, my leg. Your leg, you uh, say it bothers you. Oh, yeah, o only when it gets cold, Carl. I don't like to see people suffer. Well, don't worry about it, Carl. I don't worry about it myself. I don't suffer that much with it. it uh, I hardly even know it's there. How come you treat me like a child? What? How come you still treat me like a child? Now, what would make you say a thing like that, Carl? But it's true. What's true? That you treat me like a child. You talk to me like you talk to the other children on your route. Oh, come on now, Carl. Don't be silly. You've been coming to this house every day for as long as I can remember. And you treat me like a child. I'm a grown-up, and I want to be treated like one. Well, now, uh, Carl, I, uh, believe me, I don't mean to treat you that way. It's, uh, but, but I'll try to watch out for that in the future, though. You knew my mother and father. Why, of course I did. We, as a matter of fact, we grew up together. I was their mailman, and up until, well, I, as a matter of fact, I still am, for you and Anna. Was my father a good man? As good as any other, Carl. Other men aren't murderers. Uh, well, I have to be going now, Carl. <laughs> well, wasn't he? Well, a court of law said he was. That's not what I want to know. You knew him as well as anybody else. Was he a killer? Yes. Yes, he was. You know I was there? Right here in the room where it happened? Well, everybody knows that, Carl. Does everybody think I'm crazy? Now, Carl, you were, you were subjected to a very terrible thing. And uh, it's affected you a little bit, I suppose. But, well, no, I, I don't think you're crazy. Was my father justified in what he did? Now, Carl, I, I can't answer that. I mean, how should I know? I, I, well, how would you justify a killing of any kind? Now, Carl, this, this conversation shouldn't be taking place. It's just that there are some things I've never been told. I'm so confused that I sometimes have to... Well, it's, uh, it's all in the past, Carl. You shouldn't let yourself think about it. It's not good. But if I just knew for sure, I mean, I'm not even sure what happened to me afterwards. Well, you were, you were in the hospital. And then after they found the body, why, Anna... What do you mean? Well, Anna brought you home from the hospital. No, no, no. I mean about the body. You said after they found the body. Oh, well, it, uh... 
It was, it was three days, Carl. They didn't find her for three days. But I saw it happen. Well, sure enough, but you were in the hospital. And no one knew for sure what had happened to you. And son, you were so frightened you couldn't even talk. Anna knew. Well, now, neither as I can remember, as she said that she never woke up that night. That they, uh, the, your father and Anna said they found you the next morning at the foot of the stairs in a state of shock, and they, and they rushed you off to the hospital. Then when they couldn't find your mother, the police figured that uh, it might have been a kidnapping, you know, your father having money and all. And uh, you, well, they figured that the kidnappers had frightened you or something. I don't know. It was all, it was all kind of shaky at the time. Yeah, and then, and then they found the body floating down by the old causeway. It was an old rope tied to her leg, like something heavier than tied to her, you know? Well, it wasn't long after that your father admitted to the whole thing. Cried like a baby at the trial. I don't remember anything like that. Well, you were just a little boy then, Carl. But Anna never told me. And who's to say she was wrong? You know, that's not the, quite the kind of thing you want to tell a young boy. Anyhow, after your father died, why... You mean was hanged? Yes. Well, it, it all seems such a terrible shame, Carl. He did it with the poker. Yes. Yes, like that one. Just like that one. I, I saw a picture of it in a paper. Terrible. Terrible. And the wheelchair. You know, that there's something I never could understand why Anna kept it here. Because I wanted her to. Now, Carl, you're never going to get better with these memories around you. Get better? But I thought you said you didn't think I was crazy. Well, that's such a terrible word, Carl. You're not crazy. Uh, you do say shocking things sometimes, but what, what I mean is that I don't think you ever got over the shock. Well, you know how a thing like that stays with a person? Well, I think in time... In time, you'll forget all about it, and then you, you'll be just like everyone else. But I am like everybody else. Oh, now, Carl, you know, you know as well as I do that sometimes you have a tendency to go off into a dream world all your own. And I'm not saying that makes you crazy or anything like that, but, well, people get to talking like they will, you know, and... Carl!
What time is it? It's after two. Carl, you're sweating. I do hope you're not coming down with something. My God, you're soaking wet. I'm all right. Must be the blankets. It's, it's too warm for blankets. Well, take them off. Okay. I'll be down in a minute. Anna, come here. What is it, Tony? What are you doing? Oh, Carl, you startled me. What are you doing there? Well, we agreed this morning, Carl, remember? The chair. We're going to move it out to the garage. Tony didn't know how to fold it, and I was trying to remember how. I'll show you. Nothing to it, really. I used to do it a lot when I was younger, when Mother would go someplace, usually to the doctor's office. You do understand why I'm doing this, don't you? Of course. It's OK. I think you're right. You should have done this a long time ago. Yes. Well, there won't be any dinner unless I get started right now. Okay. She really likes you. Yeah, I guess so. It's okay. Don't be embarrassed by it. If it hadn't been you, it would have been someone else. She does need someone. I think I can cope with that now, really. I know just how to handle things from here on in. I don't usually like fish, but this is really good. Thank you. I dip it in a special batter before I fry it. Well, are we going to talk about it? What's that, Carl? The wheelchair. Me. Uh, the whole situation. You agreed that it would be better with the chair out of the house. I agree fully. I mean, how long can I go on living in a dream world? I've been so foolish, and it's gone too far. I'm glad to hear you say that. Are you? Of course. Well, now, I seems to me that it's time for some changes around here. Now that you have Tony, I'll just be in the way. Hey, Carl, now, just a minute. No, 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 no. Don't be afraid to tell me. Really, I can handle it. I can see what's happening between you and my sister, and it's about time. You're certainly not getting any younger. And you're entitled to a life of your own, Anna. Unfortunately for you, I've taken up too much of it already. Why, year after year, this girl, Anna, has given up any life of her own just to protect me, Carl. Your sister and I hardly know each other. Well, come on now, Tony. I know. I know that you two... <laughs> what are you saying, Carl? Well that you're sleeping together. Ah! Does your conscience feel better now? The hell has come over you. Good sense. Look, what happened in there? That's part of his problem. He didn't mean any of those things he said. Don't you see? He's just trying to get back at you for taking the wheelchair away. Can't you see that? I can't see anything clearly right now. It's important for you to try. Tomorrow I'll see about getting him a doctor.
it's so very pretty and understanding. You'll stay with me, won't you? You're the only one left. Just you and me. That cat, too. He's frightened of her. He's frightened of everything right now. But the cat holds a special thing for him. He fell over one the night that, well, it scratched him, you see. And... Yes, I see. I see that you talk about Carl too much. Carl comes down here and finds me. Listen, I'm sure he's sleeping right now. For God's sake, not here. There's something I have to do now. You stay right here. I'll be back as soon as I can. It's done now. You can relax.
my big sister. Now, where did you think you were going? That was very disloyal of you to leave Tony like that. What is it? Cat got your tongue? You look faint, dear sister. I owe you so much, man. So much. Let's see. Where should I begin? How about mother's death? Yes. That seems to be the root of all our problems. So let's begin there. Like, why you didn't tell me they didn't find her body until three days after she had been killed? Huh, Anna? And there's the problem of the second person. All these years, I've been having the same dream over and over again. And each time, I think I see someone else. And suddenly, came to me today, while I was talking with Mr. Phillips, it was you, you and Father, that I saw lifting Mother's body off the floor. You were in on it all the time. You helped him throw her body into the bay. Why? To protect him? It doesn't matter. It's too late for explanation. I owe you everything I have, Anna, which is a dull, abnormal life within the walls of this sickening house! I'm not sure what you were trying to do. Were you really trying to protect me? Hmm? Or were you trying to protect yourself? Afraid that a doctor might help me and expose you that I might remember something in my dream. I think, dear sister, you were using me to cover up your own insanity. All these years, Anna, all these years, and now it's too late. Did you really think I'd let you run off with that bum upstairs, did you? You're just like father, always thinking of yourself first. well today. I slept good last night. No more dreams. Goodbye, house. Good morning. I trust you both rested well. I have to leave you now. For good, I'm afraid. I've been in this house too long, and I must leave. You understand, Anna, that I blame this all on you. Not that it makes any difference now. But I wanted you to know that. Tony, I don't know what to say to you. Except you should have kept on moving while you had the chance. Oh, by the way, Tony, I'm taking your motorcycle. May God bless and keep you both.
mother is dead. You know that. She's been dead for 15 years. You want to put me away? Stop saying that. That's not what I mean at all. You never asked me to see anyone before. Why now? I just think that if you were to talk to an analyst or a doctor, someone who might help you put the past out of your mind, it's just you and me. And what's going to become of you if I'm not here? 